Roma Wines presents... Suspense! Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, we bring you, in response to requests from many thousands of listeners, Miss Agnes Moorhead, in one of the most famous suspense plays this series has ever presented, Sorry, Wrong Number. But before we raise the curtain on suspense, here is a message from your host, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Sometimes it seems we must go far afield to discover riches that were right at hand all the time. As you discover in listening to a conversation which might be taking place at the smart Coral Beach and Tennis Club in Bermuda. An American about to depart for the States thanks his Bermudian friend for the gracious hospitality shown him. In particular, for the especially enjoyable wine his friend served. He remarks how much you'd like to be able to get some of that same wine at home. The Bermudian chuckles as he says, But my friend, that wine you enjoyed so much. It comes from the great wine districts of your own California. It is Roma wine. Yes, friends, many Americans are still not aware that Roma wines are so highly rated in many foreign lands that at every opportunity they are imported to be enjoyed as rare luxuries. But here in America, we can enjoy these superb Roma wines as a daily pleasure, well within reach of the most modest purse, with no high import duty, no expensive shipping costs included. That's why Roma wines cost you so little. Have you been overlooking the enjoyment these richly satisfying Roma wines offer as a delectable beverage at any time, as the addition that can make any meal an occasion, as a sure-to-be-appreciated offering to your guests when you entertain. You get some idea of the great worth of these fine Roma wines when you learn Roma wines are America's largest selling wines. Why put off your enjoyment of Roma wines another day? I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now with Lucille Fletcher's study in terror called Sorry Wrong Number and with the performance of Agnes Moorhead, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 40098 now for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy. I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill 40098. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hello. George? Yes, sir, this is George speaking. Hello? Who's this? What number am I calling, uh, please? Uh, I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is everything okay? Is the coast clear for tonight? Yes, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay, okay. Where are you now? In a phone booth. Don't worry, everything's okay. Very well. You know the address. Yes, I know, I know. Let's see now. At uh, 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar on 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right, 11 o'clock. Okay. And be sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. Okay, okay. What's that? 
Oh, just a minute, George. Oh, our client tells me that at 11.15, a train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case her window is open and she should scream. Oh, hello. What number is this, please? Okay, I understand. That's uh, 11.15, the train, huh? Yeah. Do you remember everything else, George? Yeah, yeah. I'll make it quick, as little blood as possible. Because our client does not wish to make her suffer long. Huh? That's right. You'll use a knife? Yes, a knife will be okay. Then afterwards, I remove the rings and the bracelets. And the jewelry and the bureau drawer. Because our client wishes it to look like a simple robbery. Huh? <laughs> Don't worry, everything's okay. I know. Oh, how awful. How unspeakably awful. Your call, please. Operator, I, I, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry, what number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 40098, but it wasn't. Some wires must have got crossed. I was cut into a wrong number, and I, I, I've just heard the most dreadful thing, something about a murder. And, uh, Operator, you'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I, I, I beg your pardon... Uh, may I help you? Oh, I, I know it was a wrong number, and I had no business listening, but these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they were going to murder somebody, some poor, innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. A and we've got to stop them. We've just got to. What number are you calling? Well, that doesn't matter. This was a wrong number, and you dialed it for me, and we've got to find out what it was immediately. What number did you call? Oh, why are you so stupid? What, what time is it? You mean to tell me you can't find out what that number was just now? I'll connect you with the chief operator. Oh, I think it's perfectly shameful. Now, now look. Look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I, I told you to try Murray Hill 40098 for me. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I simply fail to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose. Why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 40098 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 40098, I will try to get it for you. Well, thank you. I am sorry, Murray Hill 40098 is busy. I will call you operator, in... Operator! Operator! Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I am sorry. What number are you calling? Well, can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now, I, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty, and it's your civic duty to trace that call and apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't... I will connect you with the chief operator. Well, please... Chief operator. Oh, uh, Chief Operator, I want you to trace a call, a, a telephone call, immediately. I, I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down because it was about a murder that someone's planning, a, 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 a terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman tonight at 11.15. I see. Uh, uh, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? Well, I'm not certain. It depends. Depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Uh, but and listen. your telephone number, please. Plaza 32098. But, but if you go on wasting all Why this time... Why do you want this call traced, please? Why? Oh, no reason. I, I mean, I, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers. They're, they're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight, and I, I thought the police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no, not yet. You want this call checked purely as a private individual? Yes, yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't make this check for you and trace the call... Just on your say-so as a private individual. I, We'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake. You mean to tell me I can't report that there's going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic. Well, all right, all right, I'll call the police. Thank you. I'm sure that would be the best way to do it. It's ridiculous. Curse such nonsense. Your call, please? The police department. Get me the police department, please. Thank you. 
ringing the police department. Oh, can't, can't you ring them direct? It's time. Police station, uh, precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police department, uh, this is Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. Huh? I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just uh, overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid, and I guess in the end you're the only people who could do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Are, are you listening to me? Uh, oh, yes, yes. And, and there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And, and there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and, and use a knife. Well, he... It's unnerved me dreadfully, and I'm not well. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, I see. Uh, well, when uh, was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, then you can do something you do understand. What's your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 5353 uh, North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge, the Queensboro Bridge, you know. A and we have a private patrolman on yeah. our street. And the Second Avenue is uh, the next... And uh, uh, what uh, was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 40098. But that wasn't the number I overheard. I, I mean, Murray Hill 40098 is my husband's office. Mm. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. Yeah. I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says yeah, I'm well, perfectly you... safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, uh, we'll look into it, Miss Stevenson, and uh, see if we can check it with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call of the parties that stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes, and personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if they stop talking? By the time you track it down, they'll already have committed the murder. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll take care of it, don't you worry. I'd say the whole thing calls for a search, a complete and thorough search of the whole city. I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far you from 2nd said... Avenue, and, and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent around a radio car to this neighborhood at once. Well, uh, what makes you think the murder is going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I, I, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. 2nd Avenue is the patrolman, the, the bridge? Yeah, well, 2nd uh, Avenue, you know, is a very long street, ma'am, and you know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone. <laughs> Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, and Queens and the Bronx. I know all that. How do you know there isn't some little house on Staten Island, on some little Second Avenue you never heard about? How do you know they were even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. Well, maybe it was a long-distance call you overheard. No. You know, telephones are funny things. Now, uh, look, lady, why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you got your husband the way you always do, you wouldn't be so upset, would you? Well, I, I, I suppose not, only it, it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. Well, a lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. We manage to prevent almost all of them, but a clue of this kind is so vague, there's much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely you can... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call was phony and that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, yeah, no... No, I hardly think so. I, I'm, I mean, why should anybody? Well, I'm alone all day and night. I, I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's a big 200-pounder. Yeah. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray, and mm -hmm. the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He adores me. He waits on me hand and foot and mm -hmm. has scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Yeah, well, uh, then there's uh, nothing for you to worry about. And now if uh, you'll just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 now. We'll take care of it, lady. Well, will you broadcast it all over the city and and, and, and send out squads and, and, and warn your radio cars yeah. to watch out, especially in suspicious neighborhoods like mine? Yeah, lady, I said we'd take care of it. Now, uh... I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. So good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you, you idiot. Oh. Now, why did I hang up the phone like that? Now he'll think I am a fool. <laughs> oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? <laughs> the operator again. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh. Your call, it's, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murray Hill 40098 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. Oh, got me so nervous. It takes so long. Oh. I'm sorry, Murray Hill 40098 is busy. I will call I you. can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. Oh. If I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could get a breath of fresh air or just lean out of the window and see the street. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with his phone? Hello? 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 Oh, for heaven's sake, who is this? Hello? 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 I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Now, look. Look, I'm an invalid, and I'm very nervous, and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. And now, my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds or so, and when I pick it up, there's no one there. I am sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid I cannot do you that. You can't? And why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. Oh. If someone is trying to dial your number, there is no way to check whether the call is coming through the system or not oh. unless the person who is trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Well, of all the stupid... And meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything. I will try to check the trouble check for it, you, madam. Check it, check it. That's all anybody can do. Oh, what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid. I'll fix her. Molly, impudent. How dare she speak to me like that? How dare she speak to me like that? No satisfaction out of anybody. Lancer. Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out. And I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence that has ever been my privilege... Give me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. Dial it direct? I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. The number is in the directory, or you may secure it by dialing... Listen here, you! Oh, what's the use? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I'm going out of my mind, out of my mind. Hello, hello, stop ringing, do you hear? Answer me, who is this? You realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it. Stop it, stop it, I say. Hello, hello. If you don't stop ringing, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? The police! <laughs> oh. If Albert would only come home. <laughs> oh, let it ring. Let it go on ringing. It's a trick of some kind. I won't answer it. I won't answer it. I won't. Even if it goes on ringing all night, I won't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> now, now what's the matter? Why do they stop ringing all of a sudden? What time is it? Where's my clock? Where is it? Five to eleven. They've decided something. They're sure I'm home. They've heard my voice answering them just now. That's why they've been ringing me. Why no one is answering me? Oh... Oh. oh, where is she? Where is she? Why doesn't she answer? Your call, please. Where were you just now? Why didn't you answer at once? Give me the police department. I'm sorry, the line is busy. 
busy, I will call you... Busy? But that's impossible. The police department can't be busy. There must be other lines available. The line is busy. I will try to get them for you later. No, no, I've got to speak to them now. It may be too late. I've, I've got to talk to someone. What number do you wish to speak to? Please? I don't know, but there must be someone to protect people beside the police department. A, a, a detective agency. A... You will find agencies listed in the classified directory. But I don't have a classified... I mean, I'm too nervous to look it up, and I, I don't know how to use the book. I, I will connect you with information. Perhaps she will be able to help you. No, with. no. Oh, oh, you're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care, do you, what happens to me? I could die, and you wouldn't care. Oh, stop it. Stop it. I can't stand anymore. Hello, what do you want? Stop ringing, will you? Stop it. Hello, is this Plaza 32099? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I'm sorry. This is Plaza 32099. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? I... I am Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Tried to get you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston, 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love signed, Albert. Oh, no. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. No. Oh, no. I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Not when he knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick. It's some trick. Some fiendish trick. I know it. <laughs> Your call, please. Operator. Try that Murray Hill 40098 number for me just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. Oh. Albert, how could you? How could you? <laughs> oh, but I can't be alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. <laughs> I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled to some consideration. <laughs> this is information. May I help you? I, I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? No, no, it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley, H-E-N-C-H-L. Come on, please. Uh, please hurry. And please, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, I've no time to be dialing. The number of Henchley Hospital is Butterfield 8 Hospital. Good evening. Nurses registry. Uh, who was it you wished to speak to, please? I want the nurses registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And uh, what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. You see, my husband is away, and I'm... Uh, have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why all this catechizing is necessary. I want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago, and after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam. But these are war times, you know. I... Registered nurses are very scarce just now, and our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I'm, I'm very upset, very. I'm alone in this house, and I'm an invalid, and, and tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. A, a woman's going to be killed when a tra... In, in fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, uh, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. Uh, what is your name, Miss madam? Phillips. And when do you expect her in? I really couldn't say. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Oh, it's not 11 yet. Oh, oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? 
just 15 minutes past 11. What? What was that? What was what, madam? That, that clicked just now in my own telephone, as though someone has lifted the receiver off the hook, off the extension telephone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now, about... But I sub- did! There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen. And they're listening to me now. They're listening... I'll be quiet and they'll think. But if I don't call someone now, while they're still down there, there'll be no time. I've got to get that operator. I've got to get that operator. Your call, please. Operator, I'm I'm in desperate trouble. I I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. Oh, dear, I there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? I am sorry. But you've got to hear me. Please, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me, and you've got to get in touch with it. There it is. There it is. He's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming upstairs. He's he's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. The police department. One moment, please. I will connect you. Okay. Please. I know. Oh, no. Oh, no, come here. Oh, please, I didn't do anything. Oh, no, come here. Please, no. Please, no. Ah! Martin speaking. Uh, uh, police department? Uh, well, I'm sorry. Must have got the wrong number. Don't worry. Everything's okay. And so closes Sorry, Wrong Number. Starring Agnes Moorhead. Tonight's tale of... Suspense. Before we tell you about next week's stars and story, Roma Wine, sponsor of these weekly suspense dramas, asks you to consider this. When entertaining guests at your home, are you able to go into your Roma Wine cellar and say, which would you prefer, this delightful sherry or this sweeter, heavier port? Whichever of these or any others of the many equally fine Roma California wines you offered your guest, they would find you had poured a world of satisfaction into their glasses. If you are not one of the millions already enjoying these good Roma wines, don't put off this great treat another day. You'll be surprised at the tiny cost your Roma wine dealer will ask for such great enjoyment. Only pennies a glass by actual check. Now you can boast of your own private wine cellar. Your private Roma wine cellar. And then, inspired by the great qualities of Roma wines, you will add your voice to the swelling international chorus that says, Roma wines are truly magnificent. Let me repeat the name. R-O-M-A. Roma wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Agnes Moorhead. I'm always flattered and delighted when I'm asked to appear on Suspense because I have such very great admiration for this program. I know you'll want to be listening next week, as I will, when Michelle Morgan and Philip Dorn will be your stars with George Caloris. One more word. The attack for victory is on. You help make the victory surer and bring it sooner when you buy more war bonds. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Don't forget then next Monday, same time, for Michelle Morgan... Philip Dorn with George Coloris in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.